as a medium, it is still very much in its experimental stages. Sure, you said it in terms of putting up like a page mm -hmm. instead of a strip or whatever, it forces you to play with different with different elements. Can you talk a bit more about how that affects maybe the kind of stories that you can tell or the way that you approach telling stories? Um, well, with this particular thing, we kind of like had in mind that we would be eventually having a book at the end of it, so that's why it's like a page format. Um, the idea being that it was two pages a week that would then build up to, because we do in mini comics, so we'd have once the first part's over, that's one mini comic. So we're thinking of it in stages to really bring the maximum out of it. So not only that you'd have an audience online, you'd then sell it at conventions, and eventually it'd be a book type thing. So yeah, the format. Um, quickly you get a lot of feedback with stuff being on life and one of the things that people did say well you know this isn't like how web comics are supposed to be it's four pages and it's like well you just have to read it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just the way it's going to be you'll catch up with it I'm sure but yeah there was a lot of um, discussion about that but it isn't the correct format right. well, well, what web comics supposed to be um, well there's a kind of idea that it's actually generally come from the newspaper strip format, therefore you've got like a daily, you could have like seven days of just three, four panel strips, yeah. so you're written in the newspaper format, but eventually you could actually join them together to make up, say, a whole page. Uh, Daniel worked on that when his certain things went right, although it's in three panels, he'd collect them together, like nine panels on a page type thing, yeah. whereas we're just presenting, there we are, there's the page, have it, you know, read it like a comic. But there's a little, what's interesting about that is as well that with web comics the um, the format uh, and and the, the structure is almost more under the control of the creator. There's a really good if any of you ever go on uh, TED T E D for TED Talks. There's a great talk by Scott McCloud where he's talking about comics and their evolution and that how um, with web comics because you just have kind of a the like square of the screen within that square and how you scroll across or scroll up or scroll down or whether you go into an image or come out of an image. There's actually different dimensions of storytelling you can use that you don't have necessarily in print. Mm. But it's interesting that still a lot of people, when they think of web comics, they think of strips, yeah. and they're That's still it. thinking of the newspaper stuff. Well, sorry. sorry. Well, I was just uh, I think the problem is we're trying to narrow the web comics into one defined, so quantifiable version, where I think what it allows is the flexibility of format. Um, I think you have to approach it in that are you thinking to create it in pages like uh, what Warren Ellis did with uh, Freak Angels? You, you, there's no revenue that I'm aware of for web comics. You do it for the love. If you are hoping that it will eventually see print, as Sean has um, sort of uh, hinted that earlier, then you can see to the printed format of having it produced in a way that you can eventually print it, release it, give yourself some revenue for all those long hours worked in it. If that's the road that you want to take, but if you don't see that as the, the final option, then it is one of the most interestingly open, creative uh, approaches you can use to the medium because you're not, um, you could do a descent into Dante's Inferno by literally scrolling down the longest vertical panel you've ever seen. You're not hindered by let's face it, what Marvel and DC are doing with di their digital comics is basically still taking ostensibly 22 pages a month, which is such a strange <laughs> number to have, mm -hmm. um, which is basically down to the way the paper is folded and printed, which goes back hundreds of years. I mean, it's like you do say, you know, the paper, you might as well buy the paper, you might as well buy the print. But there's a flexibility, the portability, I know a lot of people who like the tangible, tactile quality of a yeah. book, but will also have a Kindle because it allows them to take and post yeah. more books. I think there's room for both. I think the problem is we're trying to make a decision that one is better yeah. or more practical than another when they're all valid in different instances. I, I, I feel that we're uh, somewhere in a crossroad at the moment. Uh, the other day I was sitting down with my, my niece was about four years old, and there she is sitting on the couch with her iPad, and she's just flipping through her Barbie images. And I was just looking at it, and I was just, she's just, you know, clicking away, and she's, it's so fluid in the way yeah. she is. So I, was, so I started asking myself, what, what will happen to books? Or, and then I started thinking about this discussion, well, ah, okay, we're, we're talking right now about how to produce these web comics, but 
I think what we need to address as well is how do readers will be reading comics in the future, let's say, well, exactly. on these various platforms. But I think there is still scope to have a choice rather than say there will only be one future version. Yeah, and we're not necessarily here to say, you know, webcomics good, print bad, or print good, webcomics bad. You know, it's about what the future holds. Mm -hmm. One of the other questions that's involved is, you know, if you remember the movie Big, um, the Tom Hanks movie from the 80s. Mm -hmm. So part of the genius the idea that he comes up with when he works for the toy company is this kind of console where you follow a story but you can pick what happens in the story. Mm -hmm. So what you're talking about with your niece um, looking at the Barbie images on the iPad, what you're really talking about is as creators, you begin to have the option of you may have four different, four different ways you want to take a story. Mm -hmm. Well now, you can have all those four different ways and then let the reader pick which one they want to follow. You know, you could, you're almost empowering the reader to be the storyteller as well. I think no, 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 don't do it. Don't no, do it. Okay, it's four times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And there's, okay, so that brings us on to that subject as well, because um, there's something called the Zerich Grant uh, in the States, which was set up by, I think, Peter Laird of um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, fame. And it's a, it was a, it's a grant to enable self publishers um, to pursue publishing their own work. Um, often online. And actually, next year is going to be the last year they award it. Um, the theory being that now, um, webcomics are so easy to produce that you don't need the grant. But as Gary just pointed out, you still have to do all the work. You still have to, to build the comic. You still have to write the comic. So, in terms of, you know, <laughs> <laughs> which is the hard stuff. So, in terms of, um, in terms of the future, you, know, you guys are obviously all here at Khan. And part of it is for the, part of it's for the community. And part of it's you know to see what other people are doing and to, to keep up with the market. And part of it's also you know to sell stuff. So how do you see web comics factoring into how you actually manage to monetize what you're doing going forward? Um, well, I obviously going back to my experience, yeah. rather than speaking about Daniel, I think I don't know how Daniel actually monetized his website and asking, but um, really it was more as a promotional tool. I mean, we never actually made any money off the actual um, website um, at all, and we didn't actually try because again, we were going back to selling the printed copies. So perhaps not a very good example of making money from online comics. But then there's the question: Is are there any good examples? Well, um, scary guy around John Allison. He um, he lives off his online activities. Okay. Um, but um, that's probably through. Uh, I mean, he does have a. Advertising on the picture of advertising, but um, also there's uh, sales of books and T-shirts. Although I think the T-shirts are less now. I haven't spoken to him recently about it. Um, but yeah, he, I was amazed when I realised that was his job. Um, mm. So maybe he's the person. <laughs> we should give him a call. Yeah. John, how do you do it? What's the 